All right, we're talking about now, this time we're focused on A. So A is going to vertically stretch or shrink our graph. Now what that means is it's, you know, where C and D just moved it either up or down if it were uh, D, or left or right if we had a C. A is actually going to affect the shape of our graph. And not only is it going to affect the shape of our graph, but it's going to affect the shape um, vertically. So here's the way you can figure out what's going on. Not only are we going to talk about vertical and uh, horizontal shrink, or vertical uh, stretch and shrink, but we're also going to talk about reflection. So it says use reflections. I'm just going to sprinkle this in with these next two. So if your absolute value of A is greater than 1, we have a vertical stretch. Okay. So what it's going to do is basically going to pull your graph from the top and the bottom. Now some of these things, like a linear function, if you think about, you know, this is a slope of 1, well, if your A is actually 3, then our graph looks like this. So, um, you know, it might be hard to, to think about a vertical stretch in that sense, but that's kind of what it's talking about. If your absolute value of A is in between 0 and 1, so here it's going to be a fraction or a decimal, uh, then you're going to have a vertical shrink. So that's basically going to compress it and kind of make it look kind of wider, where this is going to cause your graph to be more narrow if it kind of has symmetry to it. But this would be an A, like, say, negative 3, 4. Those will all have vertical stretches. Now, if A is negative, it's going to cause you to reflect about the x-axis. Now, in your function, as you can see, A is going to be the coefficient of f of x. So it's going to be on the outside of your parent function being multiplied by that. And what you're actually going to do is A gets multiplied by the y values. So if you notice, um, both A and D, the ones that are on the outside, of the parent functions, they actually affect the y values, where b and c are inside the parent function, and they're going to affect the x's. And the other thing you need to know is that um, the uh, ones on the outside, they do the exact operation. So a is being multiplied here, and d is being added. So uh, that's what we're going to do. a will multiply the y values, where d adds to the y values. So let's see if we can't look at some examples. Here we have f of x is equal to x squared. Uh, basically, we've already kind of talked about this. Here are the ordered pairs for that. And then if you say 2x squared, so now what happens is when you plug in negative 3, you square it to get 9, but 9 times 2 is 18. When you plug in negative 2, you get uh, negative 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. And you can see uh, this is the values we get. Now, if you notice, all we've done is taken these values and multiplied them by 2 to get these values. So all you do is take the y values and multiply them by your a to get those. And then we just graph our uh, points. And as you can see, the shape of our graph is changed. So what, what did start here and then went right 1, up 1, right 2, up 4, left 1, up 1, left 2, up 4. Now we go right 2, up 2, right, or sorry, right 1, up 2 right uh, 2, we go up 8 now. So it does affect it. Uh, it. It has a vertical stretch. Since this graph has symmetry, it looks like it's more narrow. Where here, what you have is you actually have a, uh, an A that's negative 1 half. So that's going to do two things. It's going to cause us to have a vertical shrink, and it's also going to reflect us about the x-axis. So again, all we're going to do is take these y values right here and multiply them by our A. So we get uh, 9 halves here, negative 2. Oh, sorry, that's a negative 9 halves. My little line ran into it over there. Um, and you can see the, those are the ordered pairs that we're going to get. And when you graph that, in compared to this, it's been reflected about the x-axis. So it appears to be upside down in layman's terms. And also, the graph appears to have a vertical shrink. Or, since it has symmetry, it appears wider. So you can see the same four points are a lot wider on this graph than they are on the original blue function. And when you look here, uh, like we talked about, uh, when comparing these two functions, if we have the order pair 2 comma 4 from our original parent function, the quadratic, uh, this one right here, all you're going to do is take the 2 and multiply it by the y value. Well, the y value is 4, 4 times 2 gives us 8. So the x values remain the same for multiplying the y values whenever you have an A.